artist friends in juxtapositions. All are inspired by each other's work and engaging viewers in this creative synergy is the essence of the exhibition. Jean-Pierre Gatt. He is always searching through the camera lens to capture details that go overlooked in the everyday experience of most people and is amazed by what extremely close observation reveals. His passion as an artist is to bring these visual riches to the attention of others and a current way of achieving this is to carefully select fragments that embody the effects of time and weather. When enlarged and shown in their own right, the beauty and subtle drama of these details become a powerful reminder of what exists all around us. He is constantly surprised by what is ready to be seen at the edge of experience and by how people respond when he can show them what he sees. Paul Gibson. Red iron and mustard yellow industrial paints metamorphose into myriad tones and subtle shades in the intense Mediterranean climate. He is intrigued by the vertical thrust of dockyard cranes as they circle each other, dancing high in the air. The intricate and complex patterns of girders, slices of steel and sky, exposed, attached, seemingly fragile switchback ladders. Even when motionless, there is implied energy in the tiny, all-seeing shed of the crane driver and the big corrugated housing for the huge winch motors. At ground level, there are chance inadvertent compositions to be found in backyards. Out of the way places where residents leave things lying about. Archaeological museums of everyday life. Dried grass and cactus fill in amongst unrelated objects whose placement is undoubtedly free of conscious, rational design. In such contrasting subject matter he finds dynamic, creative tensions that become an inspirational starting point. Derek Nice's paintings have witnessed a transformation. He has broken free from the realism of his lifelong maritime sensibility into the extreme intrigue of abstraction's powers of suggestion. His new works build in found objects and layered fragments of written language as recognizable elements of humanity's abstract means of communication. Look close, then closer, into the layers and structures within a painted, weathered surface. A fishing boat, a wooden shack, a torn poster or patch of colour, a stone wall or the ground beneath your feet. 
Everyday reality can become abstracted as one searches through fragmented material, upon which time and elemental forces in nature have caused both subtle and dramatic visual changes to its fabric. Intrigued by such effects, he searches to assemble personal imagery, which by process of development can juxtapose shape, color, texture, found objects, and printed word fragments in sequence reminiscent of musical forms, a notion of harmonic unity within diverse frameworks. Wayne Hill He is completely fascinated by the subject of water. There's a lot of it in every single one of us. Aware of its benefits and mysteries on a small scale, terrified of its mighty and potentially destructive power on a big scale. Water is dangerous for many other reasons. It can freeze and become ice. It can disappear in heat. It also magnifies light. Sea water makes music on the shoreline and entirely different sounds in a stream. The artists have searched into his poems. Fragments from them are used to introduce and welcome you into the joint exhibition. At the far end of the show, are his visual images, in which he has encouraged water to make its own self-portraits, but with some controlling input by himself. Look close then, closer, into the layers and structures, the delicacy of floating forms, and the dynamic moodiness of the dark, mysterious abstractions.